Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Um, so we'll resume from where we left off for this uh, session. Uh, we'll talk about the seven Hebrew words for praise, okay? Um, so does anybody remember the definition for what praise is? Yeah, expression, uh, adoration, express to express approval, uh, to commend, to applaud. Uh, it's it's in your notes, guys. By the way, okay, just in case if you're wondering. Okay, uh, so praise is a verbal declaration of adoration and thanksgiving for what God has done, for what He has promised to do. Okay, um, and and like I said in the previous session. Uh, we have very limited vocabulary in the language of English to express uh, about praise and worship and whatnot. And I also said there are, in ancient Greek, there are four different Greek words just for the word love, um, you know. But that's why this chapter is here, is for just for us to understand this word praise a little bit more better, a little bit more deeper. Yeah, are you guys ready? Yes, sir. No, sir. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so the seven words, seven Hebrew words for praise. Once again, in your books, it's the yada. Everybody say yada. Okay, uh, toda. Okay, not toda. Okay, toda. Okay, halal. Shabak. Okay. Say shabak. Okay, so let's put a little bit of phlegm into that and say Shabbat. That's it. <laughs> Shabbat. <laughs> Tehila. Okay. Uh, Barak and Zamar. Okay. So let's start off with Yada. Okay. Ya means hand. Ah means cast out. Y A D. Yad means hand. Ah means cast out, okay, yada. It's the root word uh, where every other word for praise comes out of, okay? By now, I mean, I'm sure you've already guessed the word or the name Judah uh, comes from this root word, yada, okay? Which simply means praise, right? So uh, in different translations, uh, it's mentioned about approximately 120 times uh, more or less, depending on the versions that uh, of the English Bible that you would read. Okay, yada. So the definition is what it says: to give thanks, to laud, praise, to revere or worship with. Is there a fill in the blanks? You know, or is yeah? There is. Okay, with extended hands. That's what it is. Okay, with extended hands. Okay, um, so in the more ancient Hebrew, it also means uh, to throw a stone or to cast a stone or throw an arrow or something. Okay, so uh, that's metaphorically or more figuratively used here, kind of like to cast, uh, to throw our praises on our God, right, uh, with extended hands. So that's the first thing. Uh, the first Hebrew word is yada. Okay, it simply means to worship him with extended hands. Okay, uh, let's read some scriptures. Uh, someone read Psalm 138, verse 1. We're going to be reading a lot of scriptures, so bring up your fast hands. Okay. You're scrolling things, screen, whichever is easier. <laughs> Psalm 138, verse 1. Psalm 138, verse 1. Okay, and uh, someone read Psalm 67, verse 3. And someone read Psalm 145, verse 10. And someone read Psalm 44, verse 8. Okay, Psalm 67, verse 3. Psalm 145, verse 10. And Psalm 44, verse 8. Psalm 67, verse 3. Thank you. Psalm 145, verse 10. Thank you. 
Thank you. Psalm 44, verse 8. Amen. Um, let's read some more scriptures. Um, let's go to Psalm 52, verse 9. Thank you. Uh, did we already read? Oh, yeah, we already read Psalm 67, verse 3. Okay, let's read Psalm 107, verse 8. Man. Okay, so basically, so that's uh, the simple uh, Hebrew word. Okay, uh, I'm out of focus. Is yada the first uh, Hebrew word for praise? Is you worship Him with extended hands? Okay, uh, and these are, by the way, uh, are all the different postures of praise. Okay, um, the next word is. Toda. Okay, now, guys, one more thing is in your notes, um, you will find a lot of scriptures mentioned, uh, you know, and I would encourage you, uh, and also at the bottom of every, after every Hebrew word, uh, there are these personal questions, like a reflection questions uh, for you. I want you to reflect on, okay, when you get the time, go back home. Uh, in your quiet time, whenever go through all these scriptures, uh, because of time, I won't be uh, going through all of this. Yeah, is that okay? Um, you know, some of the questions at the bottom of of the PDF is like, based on the above verses, how common do you think the practice of lifting hands in worship was in the ancient world? S simple things like that, so you can just um, for you to meditate on. Okay, uh, did I mention that? One of the definitions for this word was throwing stones. I did right, like, like for throwing stones or throwing arrows. And I love that imagery is like, you know, we cast our praise on him, like with our extended hands, like you know, we praise him. Um, and the next word is toda, which is a derivative from the word yada. Okay, um, the definition is extension of hands. This time with thankfulness and thanksgiving okay it is a confession a sacrifice of praise thanksgiving here's the thing thanksgiving for things not yet received okay if you see a blank there received is the word so this posture of praise toda is the same derivative but now you're raising hands you're lifting up your hands uh, in praise with thankfulness with as thanksgiving and also for the things not yet received okay um there's one quote i forget by who it is uh, it says you can either worry or you can worship i forget who who uh, whose quote that is but it's a really cool quote um, so it says toda comes from the same principle root word as yada but is used more specifically, Torah literally means an extension of the hand in adoration, affirmation, or acceptance. By way of application, it is apparent in the Psalms and elsewhere that it, it used to thank God for the things not yet received. Uh, can someone read Psalm 56, verse 11 and 12? Psalm 56, verse 11 and 12. Uh, are we in Psalm 56, verse 11 and 12? Psalm 56, verse 11 and 12. Sorry if I wasn't clear. Okay, thank you. So, in God I have put my trust, I will not be afraid. Okay, look at the progression of those words. In God I have put my trust, 
I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. Right? Um, now, there will be seasons in life where we are waiting on so many things from God. Like, we are waiting on a breakthrough, we are waiting on a, for a healing, for a miracle, uh, what not. But Toda is an expression of praise where you say, I thank you, God, for the things that you have not yet received. And that becomes an expression of faith, right? You're with me? Yeah, let's read uh, more scriptures. Uh, Psalm 141, verse 2. Someone read Psalm 95, verse 2. Can you read that one more time, right? Okay. I like that. Lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Okay, so in the Old Testament, which you will learn more about it in the Old, Test uh, Old Testament survey, um, there were sacrifices that would happen in the morning and in the evening. Okay, so that's what the psalmist is referring to, saying, "May the lifting up of my hands be like an evening sacrifice." Uh, isn't that wonderful? Right, someone ninety-five verse two, Psalm ninety-five verse two, please. There, there, children, one of you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, one more scripture. Let's read um, Psalm eighty-eight, verse nine. Psalm 88, verse 9. Right? So the, that's another posture of also a prayer here, right? My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, O Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Right? Uh, I can't help but have this imagery of a child just reaching out, like, you know, spreading its, uh, his or her uh, arms across to its parent and whatnot. So that seems like a beautiful posture. So remember this. So I have labeled this as the expectation of praise. Okay, Toda is expectation of praise. It, it's mentioned about 30 times, more or less, in the Bible, uh, these choice of words. Um, right? Um, let's come down to the third Hebrew word for praise. Okay, what's the first word for praise? Yada. Okay, what's this? and the second one? Toda. Okay, I know what's going to happen later. Okay, Toda, Toda. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the next word, celebration of praise, is Hallel. This is mentioned about 160 times, uh, more or less, in the Bible. Right? It, the definition is to shine, to boast. What is the meaning of boast? Boast, no, not boost, boast. <laughs> to uplift, okay? Show off. That is the actual word we didn't want to use. It's like, is it a biblical word to use in the Bible college? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you achieve something and you just you boast about yourself, or it's not always where you boast about yourself. It can be boasting about somebody else or something else as well, right? Uh, something that you have or something what others have and whatnot. So, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Peter says I'd like to boast about God than myself. Yeah, thank you. Um, so it's what it is. Praise. Halal means to shine, to boast. I love it. it gets better. To make a show, to rave, to rejoice, to be clamorously foolish. To celebrate, 
okay that's amazing to make a show to rave to rejoice now to be clamorously foolish uh, doesn't mean to be out of control okay <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> like now when you think of david uh, we have the song right? i will dance i will sing to be mad for my king like nachon ga no hindi song okay uh, so what was his wife's response is it look what david was doing was like a foolish thing to do right and so when an un unbeliever walks in during a supernatural time or whatever uh, and when they look at us just celebrating our god worshiping our god they like, who are these who are these guys singing to it it look foolish to them isn't it but that's what our praise is you know uh, we are called to is to just boast about our god do we boast enough do we celebrate him enough we celebrate god faith god's faithfulness only on our birthdays no once a year oh maybe <laughs> we're like lord thank you for that you know that's when he is like oh his faithfulness yes <laughs> or uh, new years is like i don't know how i made it through this year with your faithfulness is sustaining me so twice a year is enough um but i i, I this is one of my favorite uh, personal favorite uh, halal second favorite not the first okay to make a show to rejoice to be clamorously foolish and i love this to celebrate uh we've all celebrated something in life right we've all celebrated uh on birthdays or whatever right we've celebrated someone's victories uh but celebrating god is just a beautiful it's the most beautiful thing uh, that you can do and uh by now you should know that you i'm sure you already know that this is the root word from where we get the word hallelujah right um there are three words that is the same in every language three words that's the same in every language okay chocolate coca cola and hallelujah uh, <laughs> okay now that everybody is awake <laughs> uh okay where was i let's read some scriptures okay um i i will i'll read it for us i'm reading psalm 149 verse 3 it says let them praise halal his name with dancing and make music to him with tambours and harp right? let them praise his name with dancing like celebrate with joy to rave who says only the world can have a rave party ah huh? no no we are not christians no come on right psalm 22 verse 22 i will praise god's name in song psalm 109 verse 30 It says i will declare your name to my people in the assembly i will praise you like in the corporate setting in the middle of multiple people i will praise you i will boast you right and finally psalm 150 verse 6 let everything that has breath praise the lord right and there are more scriptures for you guys, uh, for you all to uh, just read go through okay you are with me yeah okay um so we have yada everybody say yada okay okay look to the person next to you and say yada <laughs> okay come on guys make eye contact is it like yada <laughs> well, say toda yeah you online can also type it out okay <laughs> uh and then halal Cool, bro. It's good. Uh, the fourth Hebrew word for praise, uh, shabak. Okay, the shout of praise. Okay, the shout of praise, shabak. <laughs> like you. <laughs> like, hey, it's not me. Okay, that's for the word. Shabak. Okay. Um, definition. adoration everybody say a loud adoration come on guys okay say like you mean it a loud adoration 
One more time. A loud adoration. Okay. Keep it up. A shout of praise. Okay. All right. You can relax now. Okay. To commend, to adore, to triumph. Okay. Uh, and then it goes on to say, Shabak means to address in a loud tone. Okay. I think there's a, a blank there. To address in a loud tone. Tone to command to triumph, glory, and shout. Okay, let's read Psalm 100. I can let's quickly go to Psalm 100. I think so. This is this psalm, by the way, was an inspiration for uh, our song Shout for Joy or uh, the Hindi version of it, Tera Premna Badalta. It's from Psalm 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord. What does it say after that? All the lands, all the. <laughs> okay, Nina. <laughs> that's hilarious, Nina. Yamaha. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the first that's happened. Let's go, go. Okay. So Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth or all the lands. What else? Okay, someone read Hindi, no? Last one. Kya <laughs> uh, Another language, Tamil, Kannada, Gujarati, if you have anyone from Gujarat. <laughs> That's all right, Nina. Okay, yes, Ali. Okay, so that means the same thing, huh? Everybody. So, okay. Um, wait, let me just ask someone online. Hey, uh, does anybody have a... What language? Does anybody have Tamil or Kannada? Or uh, anybody from another country? Okay. Just the first line. Anyone? Yeah. Tamil, go for it. This is a constant smile. It's like, why? <laughs> one more time, one more time, go for it, please. Yeah. Okay, everyone, everyone. Okay. Now, uh, does it say only the extroverts? Okay, praise him. Extrovert means, uh, what is extrovert? Uh, as in, everybody who's always. Talking and you know, introverts are the ones that like uh, I don't like friends. I like to be to myself. Does the Bible say? Hello, room. That means introverts also. No. Correct. No. Okay. Thanks, Prabhu. Uh, so we had someone here uh, read from. <laughs> okay. So shout for joy, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Okay. Uh, let's stop there. Let's uh, read another verse. Let's go to Psalm 145, verse 4. Psalm 145, verse 4. Can someone read? Psalm 145, verse 4. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in, in any other language? Uh, anybody? Yeah, in Hindi? Okay, so, uh, what else? What does it mean? Anybody? Tamil? Yeah, keep it ready. What? what? Only one thing can read. Huh? <laughs> Psalm 145, verse 4. Uh, 
I am waiting. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I mean, it's just so wonderful to read, uh, just to hear from other languages, uh, different translations. Uh, anybody else? Any other? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so let Francis finish his, uh, yeah. Malayalam, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Canada? That's fine, Karen, you're doing good. Okay. Awesome, thank you, So, Yeah, so we just read different versions, different translations, not different translations, different languages of Psalm 145 verse four. Uh, I hope you were following along with me. Um, so once again, the English, so just coming back to that, says one generation shall praise, means Shabbat. Okay, one generation shall praise your works to another generation and shall declare your mighty acts. Okay, in the different uh, languages that we read is one generation will shout of your praise to another generation of what you have done. Okay, uh, when you read the book of Judges, okay, uh, one of the uh, a sad lines that you will read is a generation came after this generation that did not know God. It says in, Gener in Judges chapter 2 or somewhere, um, it says, there arose a generation that did not know God or what he had done right to the people of Israel. So your shouts of praise, when you shout and when you declare, it's also a prophetic act. You don't know what you are doing to the next generation. You're just praising God, okay? It, it's, it tells the other generation of who this God is, what he has done for you and me. You with me? Yes? Okay, so that is the shouts of praise, uh, the Shabbat of praise, okay? Um, this is my personal favorite. Uh, the song of praise, Tehillah. Everybody say Tehillah. Okay, yeah, not Tequila, guys, okay. Not Tequila, guys, come on. Okay, watch yourself now, watch yourself, okay. Uh, tequila. Okay, yeah, how many of you have tried Tequila? Mm, I know. <laughs> okay, it's not a tricky question, okay. All right, Tehillah, the definition means glory, praise, song of praise, laudations or hymns of the spirit are like this a spontaneous song a new song okay everybody say a spontaneous song a new song okay? uh psalm 22 verse 3 it says but you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel, the word used there is Tehillah. You are enthroned on the songs of Israel. Psalm 40 verse three, Psalm 40 verse three says, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of Tehillah, a praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. I spoke on the trust on the Lord this morning, isn't it? And he gave five reasons. How many of you remember that? Okay. So one of the things here is mentioned. So he put a new song in my mouth, a song of the Hebrew, a new song, a spontaneous song to our God. And the result of that is what? The result of God putting a song in my mouth is many will see and fear that means everybody else will know who this God is, and then they will put their trust in the Lord. That means others will put their trust in God by looking at you, lifting up your song of praise. Right? It's related to the previous song. 
Okay, uh, very quickly, uh, let's go to Psalm 18. Okay, let's go to Psalm 18. Someone read just the first two verses of Psalm 18, please. Let's add verse 3 also. Thanks. Uh, somebody else, I want, yeah, same thing. Verse 1 to 3. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. Same language is also fine. English is also fine. Whichever language, just go for it. John. Somebody else, please. In reference. Fast, fast. Come on, guys. Psalm 18. Thank you. One more person. No, no, no. Somebody else. Same. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. Yeah, Francis, go for it. Thanks, Francis. Okay, thanks everybody for reading. Now, remember one of the definitions for Tahila is what? A spontaneous song, a new song. Okay, another definition is that your heart becomes a library or a book of praise. Okay, that's another definition. Your heart becomes like a book of praise. Okay, now why did I make you all read this psalm so many times? Psalm 18. Now, before we read verse 1, is there something above verse 1 in your Bibles? Something is there? Okay, what does it say? Lovely. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, I'll just read one more time what it says before Psalm 1, just above the title. It says, For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Now, what was David running from? He was running from Saul? For what? For his life? Because Saul wanted to kill him? Yes? No. Now, how many of you have been chased for your life? Here. Anyone? Like you ran, like you know, someone was wanted to kill you? <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? Yes, no, maybe? No? Let's take a second, okay? It's just watch me, watch me. David has been running for his life for at least a decade. 
at least 10 years or 12. He's been running for his life for at least, that's what the historians say, right? Even if it's one year, it's a lot. Even if it's a day, it's a lot, okay? He's been running for his life. Saul wanted to kill him. Let's say I wanted to kill you. And you've been running for me. And that's the position David has been in. And that's when the psalm title says, he sang to the Lord when the Lord delivered him from all his enemies. Now, one of the things we know about David is uh, David was a shepherd boy, all nice. Um, you know, David was a worshiper. He played harp, you know, beautiful, heavenly. But one of the things that we don't know enough about David is that David was a warrior. David was a warrior. Okay, he killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands. Now, put yourself... Or just imagine David as a warrior erupting in the song, a spontaneous song. David would not, as a warrior, been, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock. Is it okay if I get a little violent? Is it okay if I get a little violent? Okay, those online, you can remove your headphones a little bit if you want to. <laughs> but I can't, okay. Imagine David as a warrior erupting in the song of praise. says, I love you, oh, my strength. The Lord is my rock. Some of you are like, please. But can you imagine David in open fields, in the forest, in the wilderness, erupting with his hands lifted high, singing the spontaneous song of praise? That is the healer. Your heart has got to be filled like the songs of praise so that you can spontaneously um, lift up a song. I remember, so I used to lead worship in this house of prayer, uh, and I had to lead worship. My time slot was for two hours. Uh, two hours is a, a long time to lead worship for. And so I could not just go up and say, okay, I'm going to do these five songs and be done. You can be done with five songs in 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so. Uh, but for two hours, what I, would, I wouldn't know what to do after a certain a song or two. Uh, but like I said, I invested in that Timothy's amazing book called The Thousand Places. Uh, so I would just type it all and keep it in my phone, uh, my iPad and whatnot. And so when I don't know which song to sing, I would just begin to declare like a spontaneous song, whatever would come. And, uh, and this was my go-to uh, thing, uh, which I had written down. So can I read this for us? Okay. Uh, when I didn't know what to sing, what not, uh, you know, how to... Um, where to go, I would just erupt in this spontaneous kind of a declaration mode. Uh, it says, okay, uh, his name is Jesus, my savior, the lover of my soul, my everlasting father, my righteousness, my delight, my king of kings, my lord of lords, my lion of the tribe of Judah. He's my glory and the lifter up of my head, my sustainer, my light. He is my strength, my hope, my power, my strong tower, my hiding place. He is my shield, my mighty fortress, my stronghold, my prince of peace, my healer my counselor, my refuge, my deliverer, my redeemer, my portion, my lily of the valley, my rose of Sharon, my fair one, my restorer, my Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, my El Shaddai, Adonai, my offering and the offerer, my sacrifice and my high priest, my inheritance, my rock, my bright and morning star, my cornerstone. He is the Alpha and the Omega. With the blast of his nostrils, he split the Red Sea. By his word, the heavens were made, the starry host by a breath of his mouth. To whom can I compare him? He alone is awesome. Demons flee at the sound of his name. Heavens shake and the earth trembles. The mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. He 
is the CEO of the universe, my ancient of days, my song, my new song, my warrior, my right hand, my majesty, my unfailing love, my pillar of the cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I stopped there. So this was easy for me to go and just erupt in song, just take two lines and go on for two hours. Before I continue, does your heart have a song that you can erupt in? So when you become a Christian, the question is not if you can sing. The question is, does your heart have a song? David erupted. You know what eruption is? Have you seen like a volcano erupting? That's what you said, right? A volcano eruption. It's not very really nice and gentle. It shakes everything that is around it. Everybody runs for their life. And I'm using that word very intentionally when I say, when David erupted, it must have scared everybody around him. Your praise ought to do that. And for that, your heart needs to be ready to erupt in the song of praise. Hey, you guys with me? Yeah, okay, just a few more and uh, just two more. No, we'll be done. So, the sixth word for praise is uh, this is the posture of praise called Barak. Barak. Uh, definition is to kneel or bow down. Uh, very similar to Shaha, which is the posture of worship, which is, uh, you know, for face down. To kneel or bow down. Uh, this is uh, in the ancient uh, uh, days. This word was used uh, in a more like a uh, military sense, as in the king is before you, and as a general, as a as a servant of the king, you will come, you will bow down, you will kneel, you will take your body lower, but your head will will always be fixed on the king. Uh, in a shaha, is your Full face down and whatnot, but then Barach is you're taking your body low, but your your face is fixed on the king. Uh, wherever he's going, you you know you're watching him, and uh, you know in this sense, our eyes are always fixed on his holiness. As we take our body low, as we humble ourselves, we see how holy he, he is, how beautiful he is, how marvelous and how beautiful he is. Um, okay, so that's what Barach is. Uh, For, for time's sake, I'm not going to read the scriptural references. Uh, finally, the last Hebrew word for praise is zamar, the music of praise. Zamar, the music of praise. It simply means to make music, sing praises. Okay, so six words have gone by. Uh, we have, we've spoken very little about music. The last word, okay, the Hebrew word talks about music and singing praise to sing songs accompanied by a musical instrument, to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument, to celebrate in song and music. That's Zamar. Uh, Psalm 144, verse 9, it says, I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. If you remember the story from Second Kings chapter three, uh, Prophet Elisha, uh, when he is called, uh, you know, when he is called to release a prophetic word, uh, the first thing that he does is he asks for a harpist, like bring me a harpist. Um, so if you are a musician, uh, whatnot, there is power in in uh, what you are called to do. You are not just playing an instrument, uh, but you are waging war. Uh, but getting into battle. And we see that even when David uh, was called upon, when Saul was troubled right, with an evil spirit, as David played, Saul was set free, right? He, he felt better. So that's the last word. So what are the seven Hebrew words for praise? First one. Yada. Okay, everybody, guys, come on, wake up. Yada. Toda. Halel. The word? The word 
Shabak. Come on. Okay, and then five. Tehila. Six. Barach. And seven. Zamar. Okay. So those are the seven Hebrew words for praise. I hope you've learned something today. Uh, this is the uh, we've come to the end of our session. So we'll uh, we we we'll quickly pray and give thanks and bring this to a close. All right. So Father, we we submit ourselves, we surrender ourselves before you. We thank you for today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that uh, Lord, even as we learned, Lord, I pray that our lives would resonate what we've learned. Father, I pray that we would celebrate you. Uh, we would love on you. We would. Uh, we just worship you um, like never before. Let these words uh, bear fruit in our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone online for joining uh, for today's session. I'm going to stop the recording. See you next week.